While countries around the world battle for the title of world football champions at the FIFA World Cup, China is going to walk away as the major winner in Qatar without even needing to step foot on the pitch. Qatar's Lusail Stadium, which will host the World Cup final on December 18th, was built by the China Railway Construction Corporation, Qatar's entire 5G network, built by Huawei back in 2019. And over 70% of the World Cup merchandise in Qatar was sourced directly from factories in Iwu, a sports manufacturing hub in China. China's Zhejiang province. This World Cup literally could not be possible without China, but the real win came last week when China became the first country in the world to lock in a new 27-year deal with Qatar Energy, which will supply China with 4 million tons per annum of liquefied natural gas. LNG. This is major news as European countries scramble to secure more non-Russian gas this winter. How big is this deal with Qatar and how will China's expanding presence in the Middle East affect our world moving forward? Well, let's break it all down in today's video. Everyone, today's video is sponsored by Masterworks, a unique investing platform to help you in this ever-changing investing climate. Please watch to the end of today's video to learn more. According to the chief executive of Qatar Energy, this new deal with China marks the longest gas supply agreement in the history history of the LNG industry. The liquefied natural gas comes from Qatar's North Field East project, one of the world's largest natural gas fields, and China is the first country to secure a deal here. Asian countries led by China, Japan, and South Korea are the main market for Qatar gas, which is increasingly being sought by European countries since Russia's invasion into Ukraine. But here is the interesting thing. Despite Europe desperately needing energy, Germany and other European nations have largely been reluctant to sign long-term deals with Middle Eastern countries. And Europe's hesitation plays right into the hands of China. Ben Cahill, a senior fellow at a Washington DC think tank, explains, in this market, with buyers worried about energy security, there is no need for Qatar Energy to settle for anything but long-term contracts. Qatar is the world's largest LNG exporter, and China is the world's largest LNG importer. It only makes sense why these two nations would come together in this historic deal. Energy Energy is the one resource all countries need to grow their economy, and without it, a country's manufacturing capabilities will largely be hindered. China is the manufacturing hub of the world, and continuing to grow China's manufacturing sector is vital for the long-term success of the country. In his recent speech during the 20th Party Congress, Xi Jinping expressed his desire to prioritize the economy in China's future. In 2014, China and Russia signed a 30-year, $400 billion deal to deliver Russian natural gas to China, but China no it must be strategic with its working relationship with Russia. China has neither supported nor condemned Putin's war in Ukraine, but rather focuses their relationship with Russia solely on economic trade. China understands Western countries led by the United States could always threaten sanctions, and like a good investor, China is hedging its risk by diversifying. This is why this deal in Qatar is so important for China. In fact, of all the regions in the world, the Middle East just might be the highest priority for China's foreign policy efforts. In addition to natural gas, roughly half of China's oil imports come from the Middle East, and China is forecasted to double its Middle East energy imports by 2035. China's business deals in the Middle East are quite remarkable. In January 2022, the four ministers of Bahrain, Kuwait, Oman and Saudi Arabia flew to Beijing to negotiate a new free trade agreement with China for the region. Turkey, a country devastated by an ongoing financial crisis, quickly followed and even expressed interest in joining China in the BRICS alliance. Furthermore, China is now involved in the reconstruction of Syria and Afghanistan, two countries devastated from the United States' activities in the Middle East over the past 20 years. Finally, Beijing has also invested $10 million in Belt and Road-related energy projects in Iraq, the third largest supply of oil to China after Saudi Arabia and Russia. Altogether, China has now welcomed 21 Arab countries into the Belt and Road Project, which in turn transport and sell Chinese goods to the markets of Europe and Africa. What's incredible is that now two-thirds of China's exports to Africa and Europe actually flow through these Gulf countries. So now you can understand why this is so important for China to build these strategic relationships. But perhaps the biggest move forward for China in the Middle East will take place this week when Xi Jinping personally travels travels to Saudi Arabia to attend the first annual China Arab Summit on December 9th. 
Saudi Arabia has formally requested to join the BRICS network and is moving closer to Beijing as Saudi's relationship with long-term ally the United States is experiencing some short-term difficulties. In contrast, Xi Jinping is expected to bring a delegation of Chinese diplomats to sign dozens of agreements covering energy, security, and investments. The expansion of China's business interests in the Middle East have been in progress for many years now. In fact, things started to accelerate in 2015 when Qatar opened the Middle East's first banking center for clearing transactions in Chinese yuan. In 2018, China overtook the U.S. as Qatar's top supplier of goods and services, and in 2021, bilateral trade between Qatar and China reached $17 billion, a 57% growth from the previous year. China has won big in Qatar because it saw a bright future with a rising nation in the Middle East. Now both countries have come together to sign the longest natural gas deal in history, exactly at a time when the entire planet is watching Qatar host the World Cup. Once again, regardless of who holds the World Cup trophy on December 18th, China will always remember the success of this month in Qatar. In conclusion, Middle Eastern countries like Qatar and Saudi Arabia need to be proactive and make deals with China to diversify their own risk. The 2008 market crash sent the global economy into a recession and oil and gas prices plummeted, requiring emergency action from OPEC. And here we are, 14 years later, looking at the exact same situation. The US dollar is strong, interest rates are rising, and the current investing outlook is grim for many investors. In fact, one of the main problems for investors in 2022 has been a strong US dollar, which has been a huge factor in this year's losses. Losses that have wiped out over $36 trillion in stocks and bonds, which is actually more than the entire GDP of the United States. It's become so bad that those with a tried and true portfolio of 60% stocks and 40% bonds are experiencing their worst losses in over 100 years. Of course, no one knows exactly what 2023 will be like for investors, but Morgan Stanley may be able to provide some guidance on what's the next best move. Morgan Stanley just released an incredible report on alternative assets and have found that a model portfolio, which includes alternative assets, typically has lower volatility and higher returns. And one of these alternative assets that is still seeing incredible growth in 2022 is actually fine art. Even with historical losses this year, the average price of fine art is selling for 26% more at auction compared to last year. And even the surging dollar isn't bringing it down. If anything, Bank of America points out that it could be helpful as weak foreign currency allows collectors to shop for more expensive works abroad. And that's why I partnered with Masterworks, an incredible investing platform that allows average investors like you and me invest in amazing pieces of art for a fraction of the price. In fact, since my last video with with Masterworks, the company has sold two paintings which returned 17.8 and 13.9% net to investors respectively. Truth be told, I've been working with the Masterworks team throughout 2022 and find the platform, the service, the experience, and everything about this company second to none. Now currently, there is a waitlist to join their platform, but by simply clicking the link down in my description, you can skip the waitlist, get priority access, and start learning more about art investing today. Everyone, thanks for spending time with me here on YouTube, and if you want to learn more about China and its efforts, efforts in the Middle East, make sure that you watch my other video about China and Saudi Arabia. And thank you for spending time with me here on YouTube. And I look forward to seeing you all in next week's video.